God's miracle. And I don't know if they are projecting it, but I am using the single, I'm not saying miracles. Because you don't really need miracles. You only need a miracle. If you need miracles, you have not really received a miracle yet. Because you only need one to set through you. And the Lord will say to someone here, Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. how to receive a miracle. You know, anytime God speaks, according to God himself, he says his word will not fall to the ground without accomplishing the purpose for which it was sent. I want to believe that there's somebody here that has been prophesying to your life. So if there has been prophecy to your life, guess what? The word of God has gone forth. And if God has made a promise that you not fall to the ground, how come that word is not or yet, I mean, already being fulfilled in your life? And that's because when God speaks, usually there's a time of this speaking and there's a time of manifestation. But between the two periods, there's a part you have to play. If you refuse to play that part, God will be waiting for you until you are ready. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I tell people there are some things you can you can you can you can speed up, you can cause them to happen very quickly. But there are some things you cannot change them. For instance, no matter how excited you are that your wife is pregnant, maybe as a young couple, you can't make your wife to deliver in one day. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. You cannot put your wife on fast track to deliver in one day. That's not delivery, that's abortion. So there's a time that it must take. And I think I'm speaking to somebody here this morning. Because somebody has been saying, why is it that this prophecy has come and yet I've not seen it? It's just because God has his own time. Yes. And it's not your time. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And at the appointed time, there shall be a performance Amen. of the word that God has spoken. Amen. But the waiting time is the most dangerous time. Hello? Awesome. The waiting time is what? The most dangerous time. Why is it dangerous? Even for those who are truly God's children, that is when you can be discouraged. That is when you can hear all manners of counsel. And some of them are from the pit of hell. They are not from God. If somebody you respect to come and tell you, if I were you, I would do this. You will cut corners. And you know, even though the word of God will not fall to the ground, it's meant for you, you might make it to go to somebody else. Because if you cut the corner and you cut the prophecy off from your life, God will still find somebody who is willing and add it on top of theirs. May your blessing not become a spear for somebody. Amen. Do you understand me? Remember the story of the talent? God gave three sets of people talents. According to the ability he knows they have to use it. One was given one. And I was given how many? Two. And I was given five. And what happened? The guy with one talent did not do anything with it. Wrong cancer. Wrong idea. And he was even, you know, talking about God. I know you are this, you are that. No problem. But the other folks went ahead and used the talent. They both double it. Because one that had two became four. The one with five did what? Ten. When God came to reconcile, what happened? He took from the one who did not use it and added to the one with ten. Is ten not enough for that one? He has already been successful. But this guy's destiny, the prophecy on his life, became his peer for somebody else. And that's dangerous. That will not be your portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There are a lot of reasons why that can happen. But you will not allow it to happen. Amen. And I spoke about the fact that when you are waiting, it can be very discouraging. The man of God was speaking when he made reference to Proverbs about the fact that when you have a hope and it's delayed, it can make you to be weary. You know, God was speaking to the man of God. Because what God has brought me here is that somebody you have been hoping and you are becoming weary. But God is saying, no, I'm still on my throne. Hallelujah. The 
know, in the United, in the United States, I've been living there for about 20 years now. I've never seen any president like the one we have right now. <laughs> I don't know which policies you listen to and you do, but I'm not a politician, but I've never seen anybody like him. And he does things the way he wants, and people are like scared and terrified. And sometimes people talk to me and say, listen, I don't care who is in the White House. I care that God is still on his throne. Hallelujah. The last time I checked, I found that God was still on his throne. Yes. And he didn't tell me that he was going to change the throne any moment from now. Mm. So I'm okay. Regardless of what you are going through, God is still on the throne. Yes. Whether it is Queen Elizabeth, whether it is Prince Charles, whether it's, what's his Charles name again? Uh, William. Williams. It doesn't matter who is the king or the queen. God is still on the throne. Yes. And one thing I need to do is to have the spirit of God. The spirit of God. When you are waiting for something and that thing is not coming, and people start telling you, even though you know you received the word, they start telling you to do other things apart from what God has already promised. What makes you to agree most of the time is fear. You know, if I don't do it, they will say, We told you after all. I mean, we have done this, we have done that. They could have done it, and they might be right. They might have good reasons, but because you fear, you will play to their hand. You will go along. But you know, fear is a spirit. Mm -hmm. So also is faith. And fear and faith are opposite sides. If you have fear, then there will be no faith. If you have faith, there will be no what? No fear. Because if you have faith, God has said they are going to have it, even if you don't have it. What I'm seeing does not determine what is going to happen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I want us to quickly look at the passage we read earlier, 2 Corinthians 4 13. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. 2 Corinthians 4 13. It says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, the same spirit of faith, because some people have used that spirit to receive their blessings, their miracle. It says, Since we have the same spirit of faith, According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. You believe, you speak. We also believe and therefore we speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We believe and we speak. But it says we have the same spirit of faith. I'll be talking a little bit more on that this morning. And I want to let you know that when God speaks, is speaking from the perspective of truth. So it does not matter what the facts around you say. You see, I don't have money in the pocket. I am broke. That's the reality. But the truth is that God says he will supply my needs. Amen. You see, the two of them are not the same at that time. When your account is all in red and God has not changed it, God's still meaning. So God is talking from the perspective of truth. And he's talking about what is on his mind for you. He says he knows the thought he has towards you. And once he has spoken it, it does not matter who else is around. And the provision of God can only be received by those who believe in him. That is, those who have faith. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says a double-minded man can never receive from God. So don't deceive yourself. There are some things that you can't plead, you can't argue, it's just settled. If you are double-minded, if you don't believe in God, you cannot receive. So, we are meant therefore to live spiritually as God's children. But sometimes the body, the flesh, want to get in the way. Tell your flesh to obey you from today. You know, at the beginning of every year, as part of the church I belong to, we have some um, fasting period that they will tell us to do. But I normally do something that is more than that ordinarily, unless we have 100 days. Sometimes you say 30 days, I'll do 40. I normally do 40 minimum. But when they say 100, I go to 100. And when I'm going to do that, because I know when we are not fasting, and I want to, to eat, I will eat. I feel hungry, I will eat. So now, before I start fasting, I'll talk to my body, actually my stomach. And I'll say, there is fasting, you know. So you are going to cooperate. 
<laughs> so there's no need passing through where they are frying food. <laughs> and then they are saying, and you are grumbling. <laughs> we discuss. We discuss. You can subject your body to what you want God to do. Because if you don't, you know what will happen as a pastor? You find yourself in the corner and just quickly nibble some things. People are still fasting. Pastor is fasting. Or pastor is now eating. I say, please, don't disappoint yourself. But if they see that I break my fast, and they, are, they say, look at you. You are part of me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you can tell your body what you want it to do. And it will obey you. The circumstances of your life may be the fact. Okay? But what is the truth? What is the truth? The truth is God's word. And Bible says God's word is settled only in plain set. Hello? Yes. Is there anybody who read their Bible? Yes. Say the word of God is settled only in plain set. No. 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 Everywhere and forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> you know, what you don't know, you can't take advantage of. What you don't know, you can't use. God is waiting for you to manifest His glory. Hallelujah. He's waiting for you, and you are also waiting for Him. Because you don't know that He's waiting for you. He has already spoken. So, someone who is here today, whether you are of marriageable age, you are saying, God, when will my spouse comes? God has already spoken. Hallelujah. The pastor was referring to my marriage here. I got married some few, some few meters away from here. Okay? When, thank God, when that was going to happen, in that church that year, six of us got married. I mean, when I say six, six couples. So, six brothers and six sisters. Because these days you have to mention who is getting married, no? The whole world is turned over. So, but I married to a woman that is a woman. <laughs> but while we are all getting married, God is showing you who to marry. There was a brother in the church, single also, but older than me. And who was not having anybody to marry and everything. And one day I was just joking with him and said, Hey, Brian Josh, what's going on? When is sister? Ah, he said, You cannot see Sister Priest. He said, Oh, honey, how are you? There was nobody there. <laughs> I didn't have the eye of faith like that brother. The brother kissed the eye. He said, mm. <laughs> Within nine months, he got married. He has never seen anybody. The, the pastor's wife, cousin, came from Nigeria to stay with them. Beautiful sister. Wonderful Christian. And this brother was always at the back of the pastor to do everything. So one time, he went to the pastor's house, and they were all talking. We were just looking and said, God is speaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. The pastor's wife said, You better hear God well because the rest of the family are in deep you. But God really spoke. Hallelujah. They're happily married. Hallelujah. So, those of us, we were having hours for like a year, you know, the costume. He only cut it for like about nine months and he got married. And when we were getting married, he has not even seen the person, the person they have never met. So, your destiny has already been made. Yes. That's my point. Oh, yes. So, that brother had the eye of faith. Mm -hmm. There's someone here you need to have the eye of faith. The reality of his life then was that he didn't have anybody to say, I'm going to marry to. But God has settled it. Yes. Maybe there's someone here. You are looking for brand new opportunities in your career, in your business, and you are looking as if things are getting tougher. What is going on? Eye of faith. And the Lord will do it for you. Amen. I didn't plan to go to the United States. I didn't plan to go there at all. I was okay here. I mean, with all humility. I was doing fantastically well in London. But my wife, most of her relatives are in the US. So that time I had six weeks of vacation and she had nine weeks. So after we have spent everything wherever we go, she still has three weeks and guess where she will go? America. Then she will come back, she'll be encouraging me, let's go. Even, even to a piece of vacation, I've never been there. So one year we now went. And when we got there, we sat in the uncle's uh, living room. We look at the paper after church on Sunday. All the jobs they advertised that day, I could do all of them based on my experience. 
So I now told the uncle, I said, I could do all this job. He said, apply. I took the paper back to London. I didn't apply because I was busy. Praise the Lord. My wife said, did they get back to you? I said, who? She said, no. I said, I didn't apply. She was so disappointed. She said, now you must apply by force. So she made me to be looking for a job in America. And within six months, I got three of us. Three of us. One already started processing our papers. They sent it to wherever they call it, because of your home office here in America. And that company came, they said, no, we want you. And I told the other one, I said, I've accepted your offer, what do I do? And the manager now said, the person I was going to be working for said, who is going to offer you the job? And I mentioned the name. He said, you'll be crazy not to accept it. He said, I'm American. I interviewed with them, they didn't give me a job. They are recruiting from London, he said, I'll go for them. And they gave me more money, so I went for them also. Praise the Lord. What am I talking about? I did not plan to go there. I of faith. My wife said she has always wanted to live there. And she knew that one day she would live there. I never planned. That's how the pastor was saying, be careful who is your friend. If I was not her husband, I might not find myself there. But God has a reason why he has to make me a husband. To, of course, fulfill her own you know, desire. And then to make sure that I will also be something else for him. So, if you know the Lord, I know who has called you, you will serve him. You will do so truly and humbly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bible says the prosperity of a foolish man will destroy him. Some people are running after pounds. You are here in the church. Let me tell you something. They are not going to be more prosperous than you necessarily. Yes, sir. For some of them, we say, if I had known, I would have come. I was beginning to share a story with you before time ran out of one of the sons, one of our sons in the church, who decided to chase dollar instead of coming to, to the Lord. But when God showed up, and God showed him fire, he ran back. So you are here, don't let anybody tell you that you need God. You need God, you know that. Work for that God. Work for that God. 1 Peter 5, 5. 1 Peter 5, 5. It says, likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Why? He said, for God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. The grace of God will only come to you if God knows you are humble. Many of you have heard of America, how things are big, everything is big, but they still have narrow roads too. And there's a particular road that I would take from church to go home. Many years ago, when I first got to the US, you know, the church we were, 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 were in there, and what will happen is that in the summer, people just go crazy. They park cars on both sides, so there's only one way for one car to go, and one will have to stop. But these people will park in the middle of the road, they will flare the thing, and they will play music. And if you look at the car, it's the oldest car you can see around. <laughs> then I said to myself one day, if God really prospered this one to have the best, they will not park the car on the street again, they will be parking on people's head. <laughs> so some people are not prosperous, not because God has not spoken that they are going to prosper, but in the way of where they are walking, God knows they will not glorify Him. And He puts them where they are. Where you are today could be a portion that you should not even be having. It could be because you are not humble. Nobody can talk to you. Anybody who must have faith must also be humble. Because faith will humble you. It will humble you. One of the ways the enemy deceives you is to tell you you don't have enough faith. You know, you know I've been praying, but I don't know if God is going to answer my prayer. What did Jesus say? He said if you have a faith as what? So there's nothing called you don't have enough faith. When the enemy wants to deceive you, they say that. But if you have just faith, did you want? Continue to work on it. Continue to work on it. It's like when you go to the gym, what happens? You start from somewhere, isn't it? And by the time you go, the next time you can do more paces. You can do more laps. So start your faith now. Exercising it. Don't keep it like that man kept his own talent. And then you'll be taken. You know, if you allow the devil, he will take advantage of you. 
he will come and speak to you what God has not spoken. He started from Genesis. I'm sure you know the story. We don't have time for that. So there's no one that they cannot deceive. But everyone has to know that God has already made up his mind. And what you need to get what belongs to you is that same faith as read in 2 Corinthians 4.13. That same faith. In that same faith that people before us, even the patriarchs, the matriarchs, that they stood upon and God showed up for them. Is there somebody in the house this morning yes, that God will have to show up for? Yes. There are somebody that we cry to God even today and God will say, my son, my daughter, here I am, all the ones. He will stamp authority on you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you could trust the traffic light more than they trust God. And that's, that's a mistake. How many of us drive here? We if you drive. So, okay, when you see the red light, what does that mean? Stop. Stop. No police around, but you do what? Stop. When you see green, what does it mean? Go. How don't you ever think that that light could be faulty? So that when you're actually seeing red, it should actually be green. Or when you are seeing green, it should be red. If you are supposed to be going and somebody else is going at the same time, crossing your path, what happens? That's not what you want. So we trust it so much, but we can't trust God. So what I want to, a question I want to do today, always remember this, that when I'm driving and I see the sign, I don't even query it, whether it is functioning or not, I go. How will I now therefore query God? Who created the one that created the light? Are we sitting together this morning? Yes. So, if God is bigger than the one who created the light, and you can obey the light, I think you should trust this God. Yes. And these days, if you don't know a place, just get the address in full, you'll be fine. Why? Because there's something called GPS. You key in, you start driving as if you know the road, and once you key in, Somebody will be talking to you. Most GPS, they have the talking thing. You know, <laughs> like the GPS I use on my phone. When I first put the app there and I set it, if it for the first time it says, Do I want John or Anne? I say, It doesn't matter, give me any. <laughs> Praise the Lord. At least somebody will be talking to you. It simply means you don't want a male voice or a female voice. But you know, I like female voices, you know. <laughs> so, I went for Anne. <laughs> so, and anytime I don't need a place, I put it, and we say, in 100 meters, turn right. I just follow. <laughs> but there was one day, I was in the city that I've never been before. <laughs> and for some reason, it says signal loss. Uh -huh. Ah, I said, signal loss. <laughs> you see, that was modest. It was not the signal that was lost, it was me that was lost. <laughs> because I depended on the signal to give me the direction. It's a signal loss. I was using a phone. So I could not even use the phone to call my host somewhere and say, I'm in such a place. How do I navigate? I couldn't. But let me tell you something. Signal with God will never be lost. Oh, yes. If you have faith. Yes. So for about five minutes, when it says signal loss, I just park by the shoulder. I'm like, God, you have to bring this signal back. <laughs> because without it, and it was night, I am stranded. Then all of a sudden, it says reconnecting, reconnecting, and it connected the game. They say, keep going. Ah, I said, thank God. <laughs> you will hear the voice of God. Yeah. You will hear the voice of God. Yeah. You will see God. Yeah. But you need faith. So what God has given you in order to get your miracle is faith. You must exercise it. Yeah. When you trust the living God, you will overcome. Whatever you are going through, you will surely overcome. First John 5, verse 4. First John 5, verse 4. It says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says, And this is the victory that has overcome the world. And that victory is what? Our faith. Our faith. You must get your miracle to be an overcomer. And what you need? I've just been told, is your faith and God will give you Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I just want to emphasize this again. You cannot say you have faith 
and you still have fear. I don't know how they do in London now, but when I was here, when the police pulls you over for traffic, they also check your immigration. They still do it. So in those days, if you don't have your papers yet, take the buses, take the subway. They, they are very, you know, they are very regular. You know, at least for you, you will still be here. But I knew people who will buy a car, hoping that they will not find them, and one or two months after the car, they are in Nigeria already. Because they pulled them over, they checked, but there was a particular one that stood out. That was not even related to car. The police came to a house. I think a couple was fighting. They called the 999 here. Yeah. So the, the two officers, they came, and this lady did not have papers. For some reason, she panicked. Told maybe they were coming to seek her. And she went to the back of the house, jumped into the backyard. So the officer just about saw that somebody jumped. And they thought a woman, maybe she's in distress, they went there to help her. Only to find that she was running from being deported. But guess what happened? After they have found that she was not, the leg was not broken, she just had some bruises, <laughs> everything is okay. And they checked for the paper she didn't have. They still process her and sent her to detention center in Heathrow. And before she could say Jack, she was in Lagos. So nobody was coming for her, but because of fear. Fear has torment, Bible says. Fear will kill you before you are supposed to die. This is why I can't emphasize enough that there must never be fear in your life again. Amen. And there will never be fear in your life again. Amen. You know, fear is forbidden. Yes. It's forbidden. Mm. And God does not want you to have it. He does not want you to have it. Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 7. 2 Timothy 1 7. He says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of what? Of power and of love and of a sound mind. Sound mind means you are not crazy. When you are crazy, you don't have sound mind. So, is anybody crazy here? If you are not crazy, apart from for, for, for crazy for the Lord, anyway, apart from that one, then why are you afraid? What are you afraid of? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like I said, faith is spirit. So is fear. And for those of us who might still remember what we did in, in high school about physics or some science, there was a man called Newton and he made some laws. The third law says for every action, there's what? Equal and opposite reaction. Praise the Lord. So if you have a lot of fear, there will be nothing of faith. Praise the Lord. Beloved, fear comes to everybody, but you don't have to accept it. You don't have to accept it. Even parents, sometimes you are going with your Maybe with your child, they are afraid of something. You may be afraid yourself, but the only reason they don't know is because you don't accept it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you must never allow fear to dominate you. Your ability to say no to fear depends on the strength that God has given you. And that strength is there already. If you look inside of yourself, you will find that strength. And I want to tell you that another reason that people don't get their miracle because of this fear we are talking about is because they have a time they are Christian. They have another time they are not Christian. Like on Sunday like this, all of us are Christian. But some people on Monday, you know what? They are not Christians. Because they can do anything that you'll be wondering, are these people God's children? So Christianity therefore is a full-time faith, not part-time. There are some people, they don't know in their office that they are Christian. I remember when I was here in England, by God's grace, I was a Christian, I was living as one. And in my office, one of the girls working there would normally tell all manners of you know insidious jokes, everything. So one day I laughed. But because I've always lived as a Christian, you know what she did? She reprimanded me. I was her boss. She said, Everybody can laugh to this joke, but not you. You are a Christian. That was the last time I laughed to your laughs. <laughs> Because I have built myself up as a Christian, but for a moment, I found myself on the floor. And thank God for using her. She was not a Christian, though, but she was telling me, you are a Christian. You shouldn't be alive to this nonsense. 
Or you say, for one day, you say, oh, I want to leave early, I'm going to a Bible study. Bible study? Are you a Christian? What a testimony. What a testimony. Live for God. Live for God. It shall be well with you. Amen. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. You must be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. According to what Bible says in Ephesians 6.10, you must be strong. Take your courage from Him. Take your power from Him. And any time you speak, any time, you are either speaking your fear or you are speaking your faith. Do you know that? If I listen to you for just a minute, I know whether you are full of fear or faith. For instance, you are somebody looking for a job. And we are just talking. I said, how is the job search going on? He said, ah, we don't know. Fear is gripping your heart. You don't know what. The God now says, he who does not walk should not eat. And because you are not walking, not because you don't want to walk, should God therefore not give you work? But you must seek for it. You must do your resume, your CV, and you must go for interview. You can't be in your house sitting and say you don't know. You will never know. But nobody will come and call you in the room and say, there's a job, come and do it. So every time you speak, Bible says, out of the abundance of the word, the word happens. You must speak. So if you have fear in your heart, every time you speak, you are speaking fear. You are speaking fear. So from now on, I want you to make up your mind. The word that I speak, there will be life. There will be life. There will be power. Because faith will fill you. There will be no fear there. Amen. So when they say, ah, how about the job side? Ah, the Lord has done it. Oh, yes. Waiting for manifestation. Oh, yes. That's what you are doing, really. Mm. You are looking for a job. God wants to give you the job. Even though you have not started the job, you are waiting for manifestation. Oh, and it will come. Yes. Conflicts is food. Your love rice is food. Oh, yes. But it takes time to get ready. So everyone will set you for just put the milk and the conflicts together and eat. Some will wait for the little time it takes to cook the rice and they will eat it. They are both eating. So there's a different type of manifestation. Hallelujah. And if you cannot be patient, you will jump ahead of God. But Bible wants you to walk with God, alongside God. That's what your faith will do for you. And after this morning, you will never walk by yourself. Amen. You will always be with God. Amen. Every miracle you have given, I mean, you, you, every miracle that you need, God has given to you. Amen. Just for you to speak it in faith and to receive it. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. The only time you know what God has given you is when you receive, when you receive the Spirit from God, not from this world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like Pastor mentioned, we obey God as much as God will give us the grace to go around the world and do evangelism, you know, do ministry. And a friend of mine who is also based in London here was contacted by some group of pastors in the Philippines. Philippines is a mainly Catholic country. So they saw one of the videos we posted online. They said we wanted us to come and teach them how to be Pentecostal. So we went there and worked with about 70 pastors. But when I was about to leave the US, and somebody saw my itinerary the place I'll be visiting Philippines. He said, And you really want to go? I said, Yeah. He said, That's a dangerous place. Because they have this terrorist group. They have just like about 70% Muslim, but they are so you know violent Muslims. And they kidnap people, they kill them who are going to that area. So the lady said to me, Sir, you don't want to go to that. I said, What I'm going? Because I'll pray God said I should go. And I went. One of the pastors, I've not met him then, was a deputy commander of those people. And the guy who invited us, God used him to win this guy. Why? Because he's full of faith. And God tells him he does it. So one particular day, God says, Go to this place. And as he was going, he was abducted. He was taken to the camp of, of the terrorist group. You understand? Just like mini ISIS for Philippines. 
So when he got there, they said, you say you are Jesus somebody? He said, yes. They say, if you denounce him, we will let you live. But if you don't denounce him, we will kill you. The guy kept quiet. He didn't say anything. He thought he has already agreed with them. He said, okay, if you have agreed, we are going to train. He said, no, I have not agreed on anything. Imagine, people have guns, everything. Nobody, nobody to rescue you. Because he said God has spoken to him. By the time they shot the first gun, it was blank. It was loaded, ready to go, but the shot at him was blank. They now called the commandant. They said, they don't to going this guy. Meanwhile, their chief had not been able to sleep the previous two nights. God was telling him, you are going to do something, I'm going to kill you for that thing. You better don't do it. But he didn't know what it was. So when they now called him, he was not there at the moment. They called him, they told him, he said, ah, maybe that's what God is telling me. Let this man go. So the acting head was the one who was seeing the whole thing. After the man went, he escaped. He took his information that if I want to contact you, where can I see you? But the guy didn't know whether he was going to be somebody who will kill him later or something. He just gave him the city, he didn't give the address. But he, he, he looked for him. He's one of the pastors we are working with now. Hallelujah. I went not because I didn't want to, to leave, I know that I want to die, but because God said go. Because I read the history, I did everything. We are going to be ministering in there, just like somebody going to the northeastern part of Nigeria. I mean, that's like committing suicide. But I've worked with God enough and I've seen a lot God has done, you know, to other people, to me, and through me, that I cannot doubt Him again. It's not possible. If it doesn't happen, I have nothing to lose. But He has said it, I will do it. And if it does not happen, it's because maybe the time is not right. But not because God has not spoken. That's how I want you to live your life. So, with that, is somebody ready for their miracle? Yes. My wife, sometimes we, we joke, much as we are serious, we joke. And there was something that happened when I was age 13. I won't tell you my age now, but I'm still a youth, okay? <laughs> Some witches decided to kill me. I didn't know this. So, I was sick, I was in high school, secondary school. I was sick, and the thing is that when you are sick, they will send you to the nurse, they will treat you. They sent me to the nurse, no medication worked. So they now sent me to the hospital because we are like, outskirts of the town, sent me to the hospital, nothing worked again. So they can't keep me in school, they sent me home. So for weeks, I was home, I couldn't go to school. Only one thing was wrong, I was having this headache, worse than migraine, they scan, you know, they don't see witches in Esprit, you know? No. So, you don't see demons in Esprit. So, they scan, they didn't see anything, but I was not feeling well. But one day, God himself told me, even though I didn't know God, but I know he has plans for me. He told me, I just got up that morning, I felt okay. I've not been able to eat, I ate. And a few days later, I went to school. But not long after, this witch was caught by some other occult. You know, they have the way they do their own thing. And she has to confess what she has done. She was mentioning people that she has killed. One of them was my cousin, very young cousin of mine. And then she mentioned me that she wanted to kill me as well. And she started chewing my head, but that she could not chew my head. Apparently that coincided with the time that I was feeling the bad headache. I didn't know. I didn't know God then. I was just, I go to church when I want to, you know, if you say, <laughs> I go. But where am I going? Because we are going to use this to really get your miracle today. Amen. So God decided to save me, even without knowing him. So now after I have known God, one of my uncles happened to be the head of the occultic in my part of the world. He was sick to the point of death. Okay? And I went home. It was good to me on a personal level, but I, I tried to avoid him. But when I heard that he was sick, something said to me, go and pray for him. I got to the hospital, they just discharged him, they said, you can't be keeping him because he's going to die anyway. There's no point just taking money from the family. He sent me home. So when I got there, I saw him. He couldn't talk. And I shook his hand. After shaking his hand, I prayed for him. I left. I came to the U.S. Two months later, he got fully recovered. And then he called my mom. He said, that's your son. What is he using? <laughs> you know, for them, everything has to be something. He said, what is your son using? My mom said, using like that. 
He said, when they came the last time, he touched me. It was like they put fire on my hand. And my mother said, you know, he said, Pastor, so it's Jesus. Man. So he said, ah, that thing is strong. <laughs> And that's a confession. Jesus is strong. Yes. He's going to be strong on somebody's life. Yes. So, where I think my wife comes in is now when she's trying to do something, I say, I don't want to do it. Say, I'll just leave you alone because this is your head. When you do not even know God, which is could I wait? <laughs> now you know God. It's no longer uh, bones, it's iron. So, I'll never touch you. So somebody here, the enemy has failed over there. Yeah. And some of you, in your days of ignorance, God has been fighting for you. Yeah. So why do you think you can fight for you now? Yeah. I hope somebody's faith is already arisen. Oh, yeah. Because what you are going to do is very simple. And Pastor, you are going to help you with this. By special grace of God, you are going to pray. And we are going to lay our hand on you. Yes. As God has directed us. Yeah. But we have testimonies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I tell you have testimonies. Yeah. A lot of things have happened. I don't have time to share testimonies, but I just know God works. Oh, yes. And I don't go where He has not sent me. Mm-hmm. Yes. Even though Pastor is my very close friend, like he said, he has asked me to come in the past. I didn't have time. Because God has not released me. But this time, I called him, I said, I would like to come. He said they have been praying for it. And he was going to contact me that same day. Yes. I'm like, okay, God is confirming his word. He told me some things I know God was confirming. So I am therefore not here of my own. Yes. Don't look at my size. <laughs> and don't look at my, you know, my height. <laughs> but you are dealing with the Almighty yes. Almighty. Yes. So the first thing I want you to do this morning I'll take it to a reference because if you are going to have your miracle, you must be alive. A dead man does not have miracle, you don't have testimony. Okay? So open your Bible <coughs> quickly with me. We'll read this passage. You are going to use it. I'm not going to pray for you on this. I'm going to pray for yourself and heaven will hear you. Amen. How many of you know that Saul wanted to kill David? I mean, there are still souls in your life who want to kill you. But like Saul failed concerning David, don't worry, they will fail. So, in 1 Samuel 20, 1 Samuel 20, I want us to look at verse 18. 1 Samuel 20, verse 18, or if they can project it also, it can be quicker. But basically, this is what happened. Even though Saul the king was a declared enemy of David, his own first son, Jonathan, was a very close friend of David. Amen? Amen. So, I'm reading for you 1 Samuel 20, verse 18. He said, And then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is a new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. Now, if you read it, you will not understand. But this new moon that was put together was an evil festival that the king orchestrated. And was going to invite people, including uh, David, to come for it. But Jonathan cannot divulge the secret, because he's part of the royal member. But he sent a coded message to his friend. You are invited to come for a wedding, and somebody says you'll be missed. Missed for coming? Of course, no. That means don't come. God will send you a signal. Amen. Where you're supposed to be, you'll be there. Amen. Where you're not supposed to be, you will not be there. He says, for tomorrow thou shalt be missed. He said, because thy seat will be empty. Mm. They have a seat marked for every guest that will come to that meeting. And if they just say to the killer, go to seat number five, you don't have to mention them. Mm. That person is dead. Mm. But the friend says, David, don't show up. Mm. They are going to pray. I don't know where the enemy has set you up. Mm. Where they are just waiting for you to show up and then they kill you. And the killing might not be physical. It might be your destiny. It might be your testimony. You are going to pray this way. Say, Father, Father, wherever the enemy has plans for me, wherever the enemy has plans for me, let me be missing from there. Let me be missing from there. Wherever the enemy has plans for me, let my seat be empty. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Father, wherever the enemy has plans for me, Let me be missing from there. Let my 
Second Corinthians one. Second Corinthians one. And you look at verse three. And also read verse four. Second Corinthians one three. You can look at four as well. Now it says, "Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort." Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word used for comfort there, I check in the Greek text. It says alongside with. So now that you are not going to die, you are going to live. Amen. You don't want to walk by yourself anymore. Amen. You want God to walk alongside you. Amen. So you are going to pray and say, Father, Father walk alongside me. Walk walk alongside me. Direct my path. In the name of Jesus. You cannot be with God and not fulfill your destiny. It's impossible. You cannot be with God and live in error again. You cannot be with God and miss it. Therefore, pray that God will walk alongside you in the name of Jesus. God will walk alongside you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Verse 4, before we, we lay hands, verse 4 says, Who comfort us in all our tribulation? That what? That we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Now, remember what I told you. God says, I will comfort you. Amen. And I said the word comfort there means he says you walk alongside you. Oh, yeah. And he says in every tribulation, every problem you have, you walk alongside you. Yes. And why? So that you can now be a partaker of God's blessing. Oh, yeah. By truth, some people will be seeing God. Amen. Amen. You know, we started by saying that Lucy said they will see God now. So when God is now in your life, anyone that come in contact with you, they will cast the fire of God. Pray this way. Say, Father, Father, cause me to be your fire carrier. Cause me to be in the name of Jesus. Walk alongside me. Let me carry your fire. That anyone that will come in contact with me, they will know you are God. They will know you are God. In the name of Jesus. They will know you are God. Yes, Lord. Make me your leg and feet. Make me your carrier of the anointing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor, advise me. I don't know how quickly we can do this. I want to get to everybody as quickly as possible.